right guys, let's see if we can stare down this beast of a problem. It says the next two questions refer to the following situation. So I'm ultimately gonna have a couple of multiple choice questions that are based off of this setup. And as I start to unpack this, the first thing I'm gonna try and figure out is what land am I in? Mean land or proportion land? Or another way of answering that question, do I have numerical data or categorical data? And then I'm gonna go into how many samples I, do I have? What letter am I using? Those are my typical questions that I'm gonna ask myself and you'll see me make my notes on the margins. All right, so one criticism of reforestation efforts after timber harvesting is that too few of the seedlings survive. An experiment was conducted to assess if mulching the slash, the limbs, roots, small branches, etc., and leaving the mulch on the ground improves the survival rate compared to just leaving the slash on the ground. It is believed that mulching will cause the material to break down sooner and release the nutrients to the seedlings. A total of 500 seedlings were randomly assigned to two treatments, and the two-year survival rate was measured. Of the 250 seedlings receiving the mulching treatment, 75 survived. Of the 250 seedlings receiving the control, control treatment, 55 survived. All right, what should my null and my alternate be? Okay, so as I look through this, things that I notice are, I don't see any units in here, right? I see some numbers. I see 75, 250, 250, 55. And, and it's got this of the 250 seedlings, right? That sounds like a, a probability to me. Like this is a condition of these seedlings, I had 75 successes, right? Of these seedlings, I had 55 successes. And when I start to think about the random sample, right, they were assigned to two groups. One got the mulch, one got the control, all right? And what am I keeping track of? I'm keeping track of, of these seedlings, how many survived, right? It looks like survival is my variable. And survival is a categorical variable. It's yes, the seedling survived or no, it didn't. So as I look through this without the units, without anything about averages, seeing this 75 of 250, 55 of 250, right? Those sound like proportions. And then on top of that, seeing that the, the variable here is whether or not you survived, I can see I'm in proportion land. I also see I have two treatment groups, all right? So I have two different samples. I have the sample that got the mulching treatment and the sample that got the control. And if you haven't heard of mulching before, when they say mulching the slash, it means you're taking everything up, you're cutting up all of the leaves and the small branches and the roots that are right around these seedlings and you're, you're just leaving them on the ground so that they'll, they'll seep into the ground and hopefully provide um, just a better inhabitable living experience for those seedlings to, to grow and to thrive. So I've got two samples here, or you could say two treatment groups. All right, and we're in proportion land, and, and I don't believe that the survival rate of the mulch group will have any effect on the control group. These are gonna be independent, as they always are for proportion land, and I know I'm gonna be running a z-test. Now, they got a couple of things. The first thing I want is um, my null and my alternate, and then they want, it looks like a test statistic and a p-value. That seems to be what examples seven and eight are doing, and that's great. I, I left room here because I'm actually going to go through this whole problem as if it were a free response, just so we can practice another hypothesis test together. And, and I'll eventually answer these questions, but I'm going to do this like a free response. So I'm going to move this up, all right, and then I'm going to start with step one, all right, where I would define my parameters. So I would say P sub M, and I'm using M here, just because they, they talked about this, this mulch, right? This is the true proportion of mulch seedlings that survive. All right, and P sub C, the way they're doing that subscript, it's the true proportion of control seedlings that survive, okay? And I know my null, my null is always that I have equality here. So P sub M equals P sub C. And then let's go and look and see if there's a slant in the wording of this problem. So I'm gonna scooch this back down 
so that we can see the original problem. And let's, let's try and assess if, if there was any slant. So it, I see here, it says, it is believed that mulching will cause the material to break down sooner and release the nutrients to the seedlings. Oh, maybe that's not it. Dun, dun, dun. As I read through it, ah, here, sorry, it should have been up on this sentence. Um, leaving the mulch on the ground improves survival rate. All right, so when I say improves survival rate, I think the proportion of seedlings that survive in the mulch group is actually greater than the proportion of seedlings that survive in the control group. So that's what I want to make my alternate. I'm going to say H of A, we got P sub M greater than P sub C. Okay, I was not given an alpha here, so I'm going to go with 0.05. All right, let's take a look at our assumptions. I have a little bit of space here. I'm gonna, uh, I won't quite use them there. I guess I'll, I'm just gonna make my assumptions. I'm gonna just scooch down. Assumptions in two sample proportion land always take a while. So let's try this, okay? So my first assumption, all right, let's go get my, my handy dandy flowchart or my trait table, I should say, and see what that first assumption is. So when I'm in two sample land, it looks like I need randomly selected samples or samples that represent my population or treatments that are randomly assigned. So let's go see if we had any of those assumptions, plural, um, if we had any of those in our problem. All right, so I'm scooching this back up. Here we go. All right, did I have the word random? I say randomly assigned to two treatments. So I, I have treatments randomly assigned in this problem. So let me go ahead and write out that I had treatments randomly assigned. That was my first assumption. Okay, I'm gonna put a check mark. Let's take a look at our second assumption. It looks like I need to actually state that I have independent samples. I, I do, all right, and I'll, I'll write that in a moment, but so that I don't have to keep flipping back and forth, we need successes and failures to be at least 10. So I need N1, P1 prime, N2, P2 prime, N1, 1 minus P1 prime, and N2, 1 minus P2 prime. I need those to all be greater than or equal to 10. And keep in mind, I, have, I don't have ones and twos, I have Ms and C's for mulch and control. So I've got four products that I need to check for. All right, so I'm gonna write independent samples and then I'm gonna to start to look at this. All right, so I know that I had independent samples. All right, so we, oops, this is three. All right, I need P sub M, oops, that's not true. I need NM P sub M. I gotta change my subscripts. All right, so I need N P prime with subscripts of M. Man, I can't write tonight. All right, let's try this again. Third time's a charm, N sub M, P prime sub M. All right, I need N sub M, one minus P prime sub M. Okay, can we see all of this? Yeah, we can. So then I need, that's the mulch group. I need the control group. So I need N sub C, P prime sub C, N sub C, one minus P prime sub C. Okay, so I'm gonna check all of those in a moment. And now is as good a time as any is, let's go figure out what our sample proportions are. You can do that whenever you want. This is the time when you really need them in the assumptions. But let's go see, let's get some gut feelings. Do we think that the mulch group is doing better? All right, so let's go get that, those numbers. All right, and maybe that's what I'll put over here. I have some space for that. All right, so let me see. What was the proportion of successes in the mulch group? Well, it looks like the mulch group had 75 out of 250. All right, and let me go get my calculator. Give me a moment, it's just over here. All right, so if we do. 75, excuse me, we'll go 75 out of 250. It looks like there's about a 30% success rate if I mulch. Let's see what's in the control group. 
So the control group was 55 out of 250. And we had about 22%. So it looks like they're off by 8%. Uh, is that significant? We'll find out. I mean, that's a pretty good gap, but I would need to know what the standard deviation was, right? To, to compare, is an 8% gap a really big deviation? But at this point, just through gut feelings, I am tending to think that the alternate might be true. And when I say the alternate, I mean, it, it kind of looks like the proportion of seedlings surviving via mulch is greater than the proportion of seedlings surviving via the control. Before I leave this, this view screen behind, the other thing I do want to get to, I want to get to P sub C, which is not to be confused with P prime, right? So this is the sample proportion from the control group. When I talk about P sub C, that's our combined proportions overall. And that's that other number that we have to get to when we're looking at two sample proportion lands. So what that means is we're going to combine these two samples so between the two samples, I had 75 successes in the first sample, 55 in the second, and I had both of my sample sizes at 250. So let's see what our overall success rate is between these two samples. So I'm going to do in the numerator 75 plus 55, and I'm going to divide that basically, I don't need parentheses, I will divide that by 500, and I will find out my overall success rate is 26%. And that P sub C should always be a number in between these two. It might not necessarily be exactly halfway through. It is in this case, but that's only because these sample sizes are exactly equal. All right, so we're going to keep all of those numbers in mind. And I still got to get to my assumptions, right? We're still working on step five. And yes, again, this is a multiple choice question. You do not need to do all of this stuff, but I wanted to go through it just so you had it on record. Okay, so let's Let's start playing this out. So in the mulch group, there were 250 seedlings. All right, they had a success rate of 30%. So when I crunch that number, I'm gonna get 75, which sure enough is greater than or equal to 10. I had 10 successes, 10 seedlings, I'm sorry, not 10. I had 75 successes, 75 seedlings survived. By complement, if I multiply this through by 70% or one minus 30%, and if you don't like me jumping to 70%, let me just remind you that if we were going to do 1 minus 0.3, its complement is 70%, so that's where it's coming from. So quite literally, instead of writing 1 minus 0.3, I just wrote 0.7. When I take 70% and multiply it against my sample size of 250, it looks like I had 175 seedlings that did not survive. It's still greater than or equal to 10, so I did have in my first sample, at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. And in fact, I had 75 successes and 175 failures. All right, let's run this again and for the second group, the control group. So they had a sample proportion of 22%. So they had 55 seedlings survive. And by complement, if I crunch this number, so we will do 250 times the complement. It looks like I had 195 that did not survive. Okay, all right. So we're through the worst part, the deal breaker part of our assumptions. We have at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. All right, now for both of my populations, I need my sample sizes small relative to my population. So what they're asking is if we were to take our sample size of 250 and I was to multiply it by 10, I'd have 2,500. And it's a very safe bet that there are at least 2,500 seedlings out there in the real world. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say this assumption is met. All right, my sample size is small relative to my population. I'm fine with that, okay? All right, now I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna start filling in some of this empty space with some work, okay? All right, so let's take a look. Step six would be to state the name of the distribution. I'll go ahead, I'll put that, I'll put it over here. So step six, I've got the Z distribution. Step seven would be to state the name. So I have a two sample 
proportion Z test. Okay, for degrees of freedom, I don't have anything that I can write home about, right? They're not applicable in proportion land. For my test statistic, that fun formula, it is the ugliest of formulas, right? We've got this stat that's P1 prime minus P2 prime, the parameter P1 minus P2, and then we've got all these P sub C's down here on the denominator. So I'm gonna copy this formula directly onto my paper, and then I'm gonna plug in my numbers for my particular problem. All right, so let's see what we got here. So step nine would be Z would equal, all right, here we go. PM prime minus PC prime minus PM minus PC. And then I've got a standard error I've got to account for. So PC, oh, you know, I am noticing that this PC does double up on this PC. It's too bad that the problem wrote it as P sub C because that is a little bit conflated with this P sub C. So this P sub C, it's the combined proportion of successes. This P sub C that I defined here was my null proportion. So I am realizing that they double up on notation. We'll just have to figure out or make sure we can decide which one is which. And the one in this denominator is that combined proportion. So we've got P sub C times one minus P sub C over N1 plus P sub C times one minus P sub C over N2. That might be why they had, I had this as a multiple choice question, because if we went through the free response, it, we would double up on that notation. All right, so for step 10, let's fill this in. All right, so here we go. PM prime was 30%. All right, P sub C prime was 22%. If the null is true, this difference is zero. And my combined proportion of successes was 26%. Okay, oh, and that's out of view. Let me move this up. Okay, so now that we got that, I'm going to cut to my calculator, and I'm going to have my calculator help me with this. So let me clear this out. We're going to go stat test. I'm going to go down to option six, and then I'm going to fill in my numbers. So I had 75 successes out of 250, and then I had 55 successes out of 250. Let me remind myself, it looks like I had a greater than alternate. So I will go adjust this, and I will just hit calculate. All right, so it looks like my test statistic is 2.039. All right, for my p-value, I am getting about 0.021. All right, and there's the mulch proportions, right? The control proportions, and there's p sub c, and there were my sample sizes. Okay, so with all of that, I could, I, and I could do the draw. I'll, that would be fine, but I want to go ahead and actually start answering some of the questions asked of me. Because ultimately, example nine, or excuse me, example eight, only asked us to get to p-value. So let's see if we can figure out what the answers to these questions are. All right, and then we can come finish back this, or finish up with this hypothesis test. All right, so the first question asked, what were the null and alternate? So a couple things that I can, can get rid of, just out the gate, as soon as you realize you're in proportion land, b is out of the question, and D is out of the question. Because this is a one sample mean t-test, this is a two sample mean t-test, and we're not in mean land, okay? The other option that you could throw out is A. A would be a one sample proportion z-test, right? Look at the format, you have P sub m equal to a number. First of all, this is a statistic. You should never use statistics in hypotheses, right? They should always be parameters. This was just from sample data, 55 out of 250. And on top of that, there's no mention of P sub C in here. So this is the wrong type of hypothesis test for a two sample Z test or two sample proportion Z test. So here I have that the difference is equal to zero on the null, which is true. And if you're having trouble remembering that, I did write it on this, this trait table, right? You could either say the two proportions are equal to each other, or you could move this proportion through subtraction 
to the left side of the equation and get P1 minus 2 equals 0. Because again, if two quantities are equal to zero, I'm sorry, are equal to each other, right? If P1 equals P2, then their difference should be zero because these should be the exact same number, right? Four minus four would equal zero. And so I have P1 equaling, or excuse me, P1 minus P2 equaling zero, or in this case, P sub M minus P sub C equaling zero. So then we just need to decide what my sign was for the alternate. And we had said it was a greater than, so C is gonna be my answer. Okay, great. The next thing asks for the value of the test statistic and the p-value. So if I scooch my paper down to steps 10 and 11, it looks like we have 2.039 and 0.021. So as I look through my options, all right, 2.039 and 0.021, well, I'm gonna round, I'm gonna get 2.04 and 0.021. So my answer for this is D. Okay, great. Now just to finish this up, since this is a free response, or it's not actually a free response, but since I'm working it like it was a free response, I would also want to make sure I drew the graph, and I would use my calculator to help me with that. I'd just go down here and hit the draw option, and I should see a little bit, right? It's a right-tailed, and my p-value is 2%, so there it is. Now, I'm going to leave the graph on here, but I do want to talk about whether I would reject or fail to reject. So. Because our p-value, right, which was 2%, is less than our alpha of 5%, we're going to reject H0. Oops, so it's not equal to alpha, excuse me. Because our p-value is less than alpha, we reject H0. Which means we have sufficient evidence that mulching the, on the ground improves the survival rate of these seedlings. So we have sufficient evidence that mulching improves the survival rate of seedlings. So if you want your plants to grow, start mulching, or at least we have evidence that it would help. Now, if you didn't want to write that exact phrase, you could go back down, and let me get this, see if I can get this all into view. You could go back to your hypotheses and say, we have evidence that the true proportion of mulch seedlings that survive is greater than the true proportion of control seedlings that survive. Totally acceptable answer. All right, but with that whole write-up, again, we didn't have to do most of that. Really, if I was on a midterm question or a midterm and I was trying to answer this, I would have used my calculator the entire way. All right, I would have seen the proportions, said there were two of them, ran a two sample, Z, T, uh, excuse me, two sample proportion z-test on my calculator, read the test statistic and the p-value and called it a day. All right, but I just wanted to go through the entire write-up so you had an extra example of that. All right, so let's try some more multiple choice questions on the next page and then we're almost out of this chapter. I'll see you in a bit, bye.